This is Fred Beckman. Fred Talks Fighting. I'm joined over Zoom by Liam Chiffers. Liam, it's good to catch up with you again. It's been a little bit of time. Everything it has. Happened? Everything's good. I just spotted a shine on your eye, Fred. Oh my gosh. What have you been doing? What have you been doing? <laughs> <laughs> I've got two interviews today. I've got you and I've got Mams. Yeah. Uh, I reckon Mams will blue and rub it in as well. I know that's really bad. It's so embarrassing, isn't it? Look at that. And I got a fight week next week as well with Misfits. I got to How go. did it happen then? Or was it punched by L or something? No, no, no. That wouldn't be able to hit me, blimey. No, it would have yeah. been. Uh, I was, <laughs> bo- I was you know, down, at, down at the gym boxing, and the kid yeah, I was crying right. afterwards, he's like, oh, yeah, by the way, I love your interviews. And I thought, damn, maybe he wouldn't have gone as hard if uh, he didn't know I did YouTube. Do you think? I think it's, it's a, a good, harder. it's a good, it's, it shows that you're in the sport and I think you're too <laughs> fresh faced not to have a, a, a few marks on it. So I think it actually suits you. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm hoping I'll go away before, before Wednesday, five weeks starts. Anyway, I haven't got here for you for too long. Let's just go yeah. to it. Joe Weller. Will he be out in the first quarter of next year? Do you reckon fighting? Hopefully, hopefully end of first quarter. Um, March, April, the plan. Yeah, it's uh, he's he's keen. He's back, so he's uh, it's taken him a while to get round to it, and he's uh, obviously got a very short list of a couple of people who who are bringing him back into it. From you know, he's all about the spectacle. You know, he's only ever done the biggest fight, well, one of the biggest fights, uh, and and that sort of scale is what he's all about. Because what you'll find with Joe over these coming months, should the fight get signed and should it go ahead. Um, is he will really bring the promotion and the uh, the wind ups, and it'll be a really fresh imp- imp- impetus for the uh, for the space. I think people will see how the old school used to promote these things, and uh, yeah, Joe Joe certainly uh, right up there on that. So yeah, it's going to be really fun the build up for that. Let's hope it happens. When he left, he didn't a little bit of work at Mrs. One, and off that he came a little bit more hated. Obviously, he had that clash of KSI, clash of Mams, so he's more of a heel figure. But I reckon after. He does get a promotion going. Everyone will love him again. Because yeah, yeah. go one way to the other. Love him, hate them. Love him, hate them. Um, in terms of promotion, um, in terms of fights, though, for Joe, is the Bazinga fight Ethan Payne? Is that gonna go ahead? That's directly? number one. That's number one. Joe wants that. Um, as soon as Ethan showed interest, that's it. Right, all focused on that. So, you know, I've spoke to Ethan. He's talking to other, you know, um, through JJ as well, and he's interested in coming back fighting. Um, he just obviously he's got a new baby. He's got other things going on in his life. We're just hoping um, timing. Obviously, it's going to come down a lot to you know, uh, DAZN's budget and appetite for uh, for this as a sort of a headline uh, pay per view, which is in the UK it's, it is not much bigger. Well, it, should, it has to be, doesn't it? It's two, these are two of the biggest stars. I mean, obviously, DAZN do do many pay per views, but if you think about it, if KSI is not going to be fighting three times next year. There aren't many bigger UK centric fights, are they? Hmm. Are there? You know, Sidemen, Zinger versus Weller, you know, still a huge name over in the UK. And then obviously the nostalgia effect there. It's a great storyline, and those two can really go at it. I don't think there's there. I mean, if you're going to list three or four, you know, if there were three pay per views in the UK, for example, on um, on Misfits next year, you're going to struggle to find three bigger than that. But could you not argue Bazinga is a novice boxer and hasn't had a boxing fight yet? I'm not calling him a novice as like an insult or anything. A novice boxer is a term of boxer, is a term used for a boxer who hasn't had any fights yet. Is it not a little bit unfair that Joel has had a fight, had a full camp, and Bazinga hasn't really had much training yet? Not really. Joe's done no boxing training as such for years. He's just but been he, no, 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 no. in the gym. But I know, I know for a fact, I haven't trained for years, but... You still do on and off, and you still you still keep the fundamentals. You still, you still keep the basics. I saw Joe on the pads; he looked pretty good. And if Ethan not really having sparring too much, is that not more of an unfair fight for Ethan to go into the start? Do you reckon? I don't think so. I mean, we can only go off what Joe did four years, five years ago, whatever it was, five years now. Um, you know, and you know how Joe would perform on a big stage. You know, was different to what he looked like in the training montages before right he's he's got those demons to overcome uh, and he's finally ready to try and do that uh, in terms of where they're both at i just think the narrative comes together greatly uh, joe's got this huge the number one retribution and the pressure that comes with that but don't forget you know ksi and joe they were they were amateurs ksi and logan ksi had had one fight it's no different to now joe having one fight yeah. uh ethan's become a good athlete you know he's a marathon runner he's a, he's a fitness animal Jim Shark athlete. He's uh he's put he puts a lot into that too. So they're both going to be fit guys. And yes, you know, 
who knows over the coming months yeah ethan's going to need three or four months to, to hone some skills definitely but so will joe um you know just it's not you know joe's never won a fight so how can you say oh yeah it'll be too much for ethan no idea who knows this is the beauty about it they joe's been out of the ring so long it's almost inconsequential now that one fight experience it's not like it was last year mm. if joe Weller wins is he a second biggest star predominantly on misfits under care side uh, after Deji, after Deji, of course, yeah, Deji's still number two, isn't he? And uh, yeah, that would be that would be pretty that would, yeah, that'd be great, particularly for the UK. Uh, I mean, obviously, Joe's transcends the UK now because of the whole you know his involvement in the scene with KSI and originally, um, you know, everything we we did up to recently up to Misfits. Say, you know, we always had him on Sky Sports reporting with the zone and people around KSI Logan. So he's always been around the scene. Uh, then he's drifted away, of course, but now he's fully back in it. He's at the Harlem U Bank fight ringside tonight. He's going to be at your call next week ringside as well. He's got the bug, he's back, and he's going to bring some fresh, fresh life into the space for sure. And, you know, if he wins or not, as long as it's a great performance and people enjoy the fight and the build up and everything that Joe brings, win, win lose or draw, he'll be back, for, he'll be back hopefully and, uh, and then come back again. Shout out to Harlem Eubank. He was on my first, the first ever professional box I interviewed. He's fighting in Brighton tonight. Yeah, on, yes, yeah. On Joe's Wasserman. hometown. Yeah, with Joe's hometown and under Wasserman, co promoted the Misfits. So it does make yeah. quite a lot of sense. It's good to see for Joe Weller. Um, yeah, so get you seen. Pick Joe Weller, Ethan in April time. Is that the prediction then? April? March, or... April, perhaps. Yeah, obviously, it depends how it fits in with the other plans earlier in the year. The, the timings uh, i think i think you know speaking to mams quite a bit at the moment i think i think somewhere yeah late march maybe into april would be would be ideal i think there's owner uh, bang up for it too obviously no negotiations have been had yet we haven't got 100 percent commitment either from either fighter therefore you know there's terms there's conditions there's all that to go through but the willing is there i'd say it's really strong and joe is like i'm back let's just make it let's do it let's make it fair um Ethan's got a little bit more to think about, alluding to what you just said as well. Though he's got to think about the whole the whole camp and team and build all that together. Um, and once he's hopefully ticked a few boxes, then then he'll be good. But you know, it, there's other people who want to fight Joe too. Uh, mm. And you know, uh, we Joe has other, other a few other options should Ethan not come through. But I'm quite confident both of them will just see this as too too big an opportunity, and to not necessarily just financially but in terms of just satisfying their their almost their their two roads where they're going to meet here it, it just seems almost a once in a lifetime fight doesn't it so I, I think hopefully Ethan will also agree to do it mm. does that do the O2 arena or will this be a fight for Wembley arena no I think it's a Wembley arena yeah let's just keep it um I think that it's just easier to sell out quick there get that get, focus on more on the uh the subscribers and the pay-per-views and um yeah, I mean, it could be, but here's the problem with the O2, and this is the reason why things always end up going in Manchester Arena or, or Wembley Arena, is because the O2 is absolutely booked out. Okay. Just every weekend, there's something there, comedy, there's, you know, um, music acts, there's so, that, that arena is the go-to UK arena for every type of event, and everybody who tours in this country, locally, internationally, they all have days there. It's so hard for boxing um, people to, to 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 hold on to a date, especially when they're still negotiating with with fighters, etc. It's very different when Justin Bieber's going on tour; they back, they book it in and they're it's done. Whereas a boxing event, you you've got to hold it and you've got to hold on to it without releasing that event, and and it's it's quite risky to do that. Obviously, you've got to put money down, etc. But I just don't know what the diary is at O2, so it's always it's always a little easier to just go a little little smaller. Mm, okay. That's fair enough then. Um, moving on to one of your other guys. You might obviously manage quite a few people. I'm just on his Twitter right now, scrolling down. Anison Gibb. He hasn't Gibber. been very, yeah, he hasn't been very active recently on his social. No. Sort of Gibb. Well, he, he's, he's shown what he's doing. He's over been in Mecca, um, on a bit of a religious journey, seeing his family. You know, don't forget, with Gibb, everyone goes, oh yeah, he hasn't been, hasn't had that many fights in the last two years. But he has been in camp a lot. You know, that two years ago was the whole year was Austin McBroom. Kept getting delayed. If you remember twice, it got delayed. Then a couple of months off, couldn't quite get ready for the potential Mayweather fight we were going to fit in before the, the Kingpin tournament. And then obviously everything that went on with Kingpin, first event was on time, great. Then the second event was meant to be like six weeks later. And then I got pushed back twice. And so he was in one big, long camp, ready to go then in the final with, with Kenny, which didn't happen. So again, all this year, you know, if, if he carried on training too much more, he, he'd burn himself out. You just can't keep because he's in and out of camp every, 
you know, has a camp. One week, there's the delay of the date. So right now, he's st- taking a step back, surveying the scene. He's in no rush. You know, he's in a bit of a mindset just to rejuvenate himself. He'll stay fit doing his runs, etc. cetera. Um, but he's, in, he's, 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 he's his own man. He's not going to be forced into doing things, as you've probably noticed over time anyway. So someone like Git, uh, Slim calling him out and sending posting uh, voice notes of what he sent to me. I don't know if you saw that last week. That's not going to help anybody. And it's certainly not going to help Slim. And I'm certainly not going to reply to that because then he posts that on social media and I don't do things publicly. So, uh, yeah, no, but that's got nothing to do with avoiding Slim. Um, it gives waiting for an opportunity and we will look for opportunities. And and it, and it doesn't therefore mean, you know, there's still, we've still got to get over a little bit of the mis- misfits issues because obviously he got a lot of hate last year from wanting too much money for all this, which was completely false. We know, you know, that wasn't why he was on misfits. He already had a contract in place. We already potentially had the Mayweather fight and then misfits when they had an event available for him while he was not, not, not taking time out, he wasn't available. That was simply it. And then obviously everybody, harps on about you know he's got the seven figure gibber and all that that's all just great fun right back from the eddie hearn days you know versus jake paul wasn't it you know jake paul can fight ksi but first he's got to get past the seven figure gibber he didn't get seven figures to fight jake paul but you know he's been working up to that and it's it's all part of the part of the fun which people need to remember it's this is all good fun and gibbs uh gib given half the chance makes the best content and the fun when, when it when it when it matters do you think if we were really lucky we'll get a tweet from gib before the end of the year <laughs> yeah. uh he might do he tweeted all about he was he tweeted quite uh actively through the prime card right slagging everyone well, he had to go with everyone he was here i thought we're yeah, sorry well, sometimes you have, to deal, you have to deal with all the all your clients fighting each other i mean gib and joella are back at it in the day joella and deji go at it and now gib's going at deji it must be very awkward being in no man's land for you well it doesn't matter these like, they, they, their own guys aren't there and um you know Gib uh, gives his own man. He can he can he can can keep his uh, keep his foot in the door as he wants to, and everybody can comment as they like. He'll probably be having a go at Jarvis for not beating B be Dave inside one round the weekend. Yeah. Okay. There we go. There's our tweet. <laughs> I know, <laughs> Gib, know Gib watches, so I know we love Gib. He's good. Good friend of the. Yeah. Tr- um. So you reckon Gib versus Slim on Misfits next year? I mean, that's the next logical fight to make. Slim's possibly. Having- I mean, I don't think Sl- Slim Slim's um Slim's an opportunist. You know. Still, you know, I keep saying this about Slimio. He, he he's known because of Misfits rather than his own platform, rather than you know the likes of Gib have built those audiences through the UK community, etc. Um, Slim Slim can, is only doing what he can do, and it's great. I think uh, congratulations to him and uh, you know beating Pappy. I was there; it was a fantastic fight. He took a, one heck of a beating and 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 won that. But Gib doesn't care about belts and you know, being the the face of a promotion like Misfits, he'll fight Slim if the opportunity was right, right time, right place. Yes, of course, the right money to come back and, and, and commit to something like that. But it's not just all about Slim, just because people think, oh, these are two top five fighters. They should fight. It doesn't always work like that. Slim had an amazing win over Salt Pappy, a knockout win over Salt Pappy, yeah. which Andy Taylor couldn't do. Slim also beats Zanetti. He's the only undefeated boxer in infamous boxing. Yeah. Well, maybe you should fight Jake Paul, see if he gets one on the last, and then it'll be the same as Gib. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching, I watched your interview, Liam, with uh, John Corby did it, and it was at the Jake Paul weigh-ins, and it's you and Jeff, Logan's manager. Oh, yeah. Jake's manager at the time. And I don't think Jeff understood the British humour, because as a Brit watching it, you did so many jabs at Jeff, and Jeff just like, didn't, didn't realise. Do you remember doing it? <laughs> Yeah, I don't mind that little sarcasm. That's yeah. Sometimes there's a few I dig at you as well, but yeah, you you, you <laughs> seem to you seem to read them. <laughs> um, just a couple more things before we let you go, Deji. Um, yeah, yeah. When do you reckon he'll be out? Been frustrated. Deji should have been on the prime card. He was gonna be. We wanted Bryce Hall, of course. Um, Bryce has been messing us around for a couple of years. Uh, he always likes to come back in the scene, get the clout from it, be seen to be part of it. He obviously came over to the prime card. Was there row behind us? Um, at ringside and um, that was great but talking to him and his manager he's, he's not ready to fight right now still you know he's trying to trying to make a bit of a, a name for himself hopefully getting a few acting roles in in, in movies over in Hollywood um, but ultimately he, he loves the fight game and he wants to be part of it but like always we, we've tried to build Deji's next fight around Bryce Hall too many times now to keep waiting for him so yeah Deji was meant to fight Nunes on the uh, on the prime card uh, but Nunes pulled out because after the the Kingpin semifinals, King um, 
Nunez's coach asked one of the promoters of, of the event, um, what do you th- we, we basically agreed with Mams and Nunez, uh, to, Deji, to fight to fight uh, on the prime card. It was going to be one of potentially a two-fight deal with them. And um, and Nunez was up for it, and that was good. But then the coach just just wanted a bit of uh, insight into how good Deji was. From uh, He asked a few people. And he asked one particular guy, um, in, just in the production team at Kingpin, oh, do you know Deji? How, how, how would he get on against – how would Nunez get on against Deji? And this guy goes, Deji would smoke Nunez. And so Nunez pulled out. So that one guy, just lossy guys, a lot. Yeah. Like, well, it, it, well, it's not about the money because Deji will fight guy. eventually anyway, but it, it ruined the trajectory and it, and it meant that Deji didn't make the prime card. So yeah. That one, that one guy got fired after that. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, not around well, he's not a misfits anyway so he's, he's on a, on a you know, uh... he works, he, he, he's independent he works across different promotions anyway i won't name him uh, get, <laughs> although although he'd probably like me to so he can have a bit of beef with people online um but anyway yeah so that screwed that over so it's a case of okay what do we do next next we were thinking february for a card which is now which probably won't happen um Deji's keen to to step in on a few few things but like anything he's not going to start training seriously um, until he knows there's a definite deal and a definite thing within a few months' time to do that, he'll he'll he'll, he'll pop into see daily every so often and keep keep uh, keep trimish. Uh, but he, he he tends to get on with his YouTube and stuff in the meantime. He's not like a gear of a slim uh, pappy who who are living and breathing this, as we all know. So, but there are names he's excited by. You know, Weller's back in the scene. They've had beef over the years. Deji would like to fight Joe at some that's stage. Hey, that's hey for you as well, Deji Joe Weller. Hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, and even if I mean, I'm not not making any matchmaking here or anything like that. And obviously, Joe would pre- probably prefer the not to not to fight Deji first back in because that is to your point. Deji has way more experience than Ethan and Joe, right? So that's perhaps not quite a fair one for Joe on the comeback. But at some stage, you know, that would be one Joe's Joe would like to do. Uh, and Deji has said, yeah, I'd fight Weller because um, he needs something. To to get him out of bed for not not physically but what i mean is excited about um in terms of any projects he does let alone just boxing so well as one and bryce hall's the other they're the two i would love to see next year um and they would be two massive fights with they for Dej. but you know there's other people he likes he always has a bit of beef and a bit of fun with but i don't think it's necessarily the opponent to, to have on a headline definitely not paper well maybe not a ped, maybe not but it's Dej, so perhaps it, it would be people like ed matthews uh and even like let's say somehow and you know, let's face it, it's a bit of a mismatch. Let's somehow B Dave beats Jarvis. Why not fake? But you know, they've had a bit of beef recently. Deji would fight B Dave then, but mm-hmm. I don't think he would unless he, if he, if if B Dave gets smoked in the first round against Jarvis, there's, there's no interest there. Well, Deji versus Ed Matthews, I think, makes perfect sense. Ed yeah. Edward, full training camp, he beat Swarms in the first round, and Deji went the full distance, distance of Swarms. So you got that comparison yeah. to make. No, he definitely on, on the they short did, list. They did face off, the, they did to... face off the Kingpin as well, went back and forth there. Uh, his story. Yeah, he'd fight, he'd fight, he'd fight Ed, but th- there's a hierarchy and there's there's interest. And Deji, you know, doesn't fight as often as these guys. So when he does now, he, in the same way as Joe wants to be, have the big spectacle, I think Deji doesn't need to be fighting the B Daves. And no disrespect to to Dave, I think he's great. Well, he's the Wasabi rematch, Alex Wasabi. Is that not the, the guy? Month? He's so dull, isn't he? It's so flat. Um, I don't think he needs to go back through all that. I think he just needs to see what the exciting ones and i think a, a, a home homecoming weller deji fight would be incredible wasabi mm. brings no interest really and bryce is the only overseas obvious one in the scene that that excites him too um but yeah let's see what dave does the weekend let's see um ed definitely would be of, of interest at some stage but if you were to rank them you'd have weller and bryce at the top wouldn't you and just one more guy yeah you, you, you do quite a few guys do fairly um jay swingler he's yeah, coming yeah. back I know that for a fact, just because you don't leave boxing. Boxing, you never escape boxing. It's very, very hard. He is so a no no... example. I was going to say that had one fighter left, but no, they always come back around. Jay, I'm sure. Maybe, will maybe. So, so Jay, Jay's, Jay's put no, no pressure on him. He's got no intentions necessarily of coming back and fighting anytime soon. But um, he likes. To, he, he's gone back to the gym since his his European travels back with Bav in there. Um, not every day, just just enough to keep himself, you know, happy and in a good frame of mind. And exercise is great for mental well being as well. And and just like Joe, Jay loves that's that's a big reason why he does it. Um and that's the only reason he's doing it now for his for his for his fitness, his health. Um Bav, his coach, is putting no pressure on him, putting him back in the ring. If Jay I mean uh, Jay genuinely has not said I'm coming back. So mm. don't don't hold up any hopes for that just yet. But 
you know, I'm sure you'll find out soon enough. Bath is the same coach, isn't he? He's, he's the bald guy, isn't he? Yeah. The kind yeah. of classic Rocky Tough looking coach. As nails. Yeah, he is proper Rocky coach. Yeah, <laughs> he is. He is old school. And he mm. trains everyone from bare knuckle fighters locally in Telford to, you know, like Sir Joe, and he works with, yeah, um, uh, Liam Taylor, isn't it? And people. So he's he's got a great range of fighters. Yeah. Mm, yeah. The classic, the classic boxing coach. Friday, you go, Liam. Anything else you want to add before we wrap this up? Not really. No, I'm excited for, um, you know, the, the coming months. I know it's gone under radar a bit, the, the Your Call fight. Uh, yeah. Really interested. I'm thinking about coming down Friday. Yeah. I'm hoping, I mean, Joe's going to be there. It'd be great if Ethan could be there. Who's right? going to be, be there? Right. Joe, so Joe Weller's going to be at the show. Joe's definitely there. Yeah. Yeah. Joe will be yeah, there. That's right. um, we'll be going out soon. Um, Joe Weller's going to be there. <laughs> Yeah, Ethan. Um, don't know about Ethan. Don't know. Don't know yet. Don't know. Um, I think he's got a lot of Simon stuff going on that weekend. And, uh, that that's a Friday, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, who knows? Um, Joe definitely there. W- wouldn't it be great to have those two face off there? That would be brilliant. Um, we'll see. But I'm but, sure um, Joe. I'm sure Joe will get in with someone else. To be fair, knowing Joe, if we get, if we get around, you know, we'll get Joe in the there. ring. Get on the mic. Show what people have got to look forward to. Yeah, that's true. I liked his wrestling video as well. But that was quite cool. Yeah, no, don't forget. You know, he was he was the, you know, some of those videos have got so many millions of views. His WWE in public videos, they were, you know, it was great. And uh, yeah, no, it's all part of what he does. He loves loves entertaining, and that's that sports entertainment, isn't it? And that's as close as it gets now, I think, to what we do, what what misfits are doing here. Even though they're getting more and more serious, I guess, in terms of quality, you know, you're not going to have Joe jumping in with a Pappy or a, a Slim or a Gib straight away, are you? He'll be more about the entertainment. I think him versus Ethan, the, the trash talk would be immense. Wouldn't it? It'd be so good. And Ethan, even, even Ethan's girlfriend, Faith, she's great for it. It was so, yeah. was so funny when, when Faith was like on the podcast, you can't lose. That's well embarrassing. <laughs> 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 she's talking him out, isn't she? Even though she's trying to talk. No, she's gonna hype him up because she. Get, oh, it's really funny because like she thinks he can go fight anyone, and she's like really yeah. backing him. So I think any two. I tell you what, I, I remember back in the day when uh, uh, Ethan was meant was was really keen to be on the very first card uh, back in the the Weller days. Um, that game was that game. Remember, Nick yeah, yeah, he was meant to fight Nick. Nick realized very soon Ethan's a serious guy. And he would take it 10 times more serious than Nick and he would have got his ass handed to him. So I think uh, <laughs> he was wise to pull out that. But Ethan was so motivated. And um, again, he never got to fight, but he's never lost that bug. And and he's always said, I want to do this at least once. And, um, you know, I think um, there aren't too many more fun and big ske- spectacles um, in the UK for him than, than a Weller fight. That's just absolutely, it would be immense. And I really, I mean, he, I know he wants to do it. It's just whether he can f- um, fit it in time-wise, logistically around his family, etc. But I know he wants to do it. Mm, certainly, yeah. That would be, that would be have to go, he follows me on Twitter, so I'll message Ethan and try and set something up. See if yeah. He's happy worth every, every line, every minute on, on an interview is great. Yeah, he's a good talker, Ethan, as well. He, yeah, he's a really good talker, actually. He can talk. And so They're both talk. brilliant. Really They're good both idea, brilliant. I'm so excited about it, potentially, yeah. Yes, brilliant. the money signs, the how many papers. Nah, just, it's all it's about... Dude, it dude. I had my money years ago, Fred. <laughs> Don't make much from this 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 boxing lark. <laughs> Not these days. It's uh, it's just all does about Ethan, the... Uh, does Ethan Joella do... Does it do 300,000 plus? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Well, I think that, I, Air Side I Fournier think... did 300,000 plus, but that only had build up in five weeks, to be fair. If this is yeah. what up, like for it, about... again, it was all on JJ, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is would well a plus position. Sure from the side again. Men, Air Side will get involved as well. Oh, 100%. I mean, I know the side men don't actively promote and push and support misfits. Obviously, they get behind JJ. I get a feeling among, around the side men, Ethan might, might get a little bit more. Um, because because JJ doesn't need it, right? But uh, I think I think when well, it's, it's new as well, it. they've they've seen KSI box. Like all the, the side men, that not all of them go to the fights now. Or I reckon if even was to fight, that all they'd all turn up being. Oh, of course they would. Yeah, yeah, absolutely be there. Yeah, it's great. The whole of the UK community come out for that. All the old school YouTubers as well. It would be uh, it would be a heck of a fight week as well. Yeah, uh, that's really good actually. I'm looking forward to it when it happens next year. Miss is looking good for next year, looking strong. Um, yeah. But Liam, thank you very much. That's a good good little good little time there. Thank you. No problem. Cheers, Fred. See you soon.